Hola, amigos and amigas. This is Steve Schlesinger. I am talking to you today about two things. I'm talking about the brand new Intel D510 motherboard and the Windows Home Server. So it's something old and something new. Home Server's been out for a few years, though they have definitely improved over the last year. I'm really impressed with it. Um, as far as the motherboard, it's a brand new motherboard from Intel. It is made with a... a um, the D510 CPU, which is an Atom CPU, it's a Pineview CPU, which means that um, the video controller and the ID controller have been moved off of a chip on the motherboard and actually placed on the same die as the CPU. It's a 32 nanometer core, which is a smaller, thinner, and actually runs much cooler CPU. And so cool, as a matter of fact, that it doesn't need a, a CPU fan anymore. It, it's cool by passive cooling so the little fan that comes off of your power supply is all you really need to keep your case cool um, if you feel you need a little bit more you can always put another case fan inside of the uh, case as well um, all in all the only problem I've had with the install it has been that it had a pretty well documented going to sleep and not waking up problem which I took care of with a flash just by flashing the BIOS, it took about five minutes. I did it with a USB and um, USB flash um, drive, and it was really straightforward and simple. Um, now we're looking at the Windows Home Server. I just wanted to do a quick t overview of this Windows Home Server. A couple things that I definitely say why it's worthwhile. Um, it's, well, first of all, if you're going to build versus buy. That's the big question a lot of people have. If you're capable of putting together a computer system, um, believe me, there's nothing simpler to put together than this Windows, this Intel motherboard. All it really took was, um, you can't install a graphics card because it's built onto the CPU. And the um, CPU came with the motherboard. It's already under a heat sink. There's really nothing for you to do uh, other than to put um, fill up the two banks with RAM and that took all of you know a minute or so to do that put it into a case probably 20 minutes to get everything situated properly um, so straightforward and simple build doesn't really get much easier than that if you really don't know what you're doing you might not want to take it on it's something that if you don't have a friend that can help you build this and believe me this is like probably like uh, half an afternoon to get it together including the install of the operating system uh, then again you can buy the HP Media Center or Media Server it's um, I guess they call it the Media Smart Server um, it's the same thing it's Windows Home Server they have a couple little proprietary things from HP and all in all it's been really uh, I guess people have been really happy with that product as well the reason I like building the home server myself is I can specify what drives go inside of it. I put a Western Digital one terabyte green caviar green drive in and uh, so far the temperatures have been really nice and low on that and it's very energy conscious. Um, we're looking at Windows Home Server console right now and just pretty much what all I wanted to show you as far as this is concerned um, what makes it really different from a NAS is a NAS would just back up whatever you got. You, you can actually have a backup program from within Windows 7 or Vista. There's backup and store. You can actually schedule backups and all sorts of other things. Um, but uh, Windows Home Server is actually built off Windows Server 2003. Um, and it, um, I don't know, it, it really, it's something that looks almost like a toy or a joke when you look at it first. It's too simplistic. It looks like something teenagers would play with. Um, but the reality is, is that this thing is pretty sophisticated. I'll give you an example. We're looking at what I've got here on this um, on the console here as far as computers and backups. And I've got okay, one XP here. Windows 7 professional, Windows 7 professional, Windows 7 ultimate, professional, professional. You know, it's all Windows 7 and another XP down here. But um, what it does, it says when it does the backup and restore, it goes, okay, I'm going to backup this entire computer, all Windows 7 on it. 
but when it gets to the next Windows 7 install, it says, you know what, I've already got most of these files on this last backup. I'm not going to back up another set. It's a redundant backup. I'm just going to take the files that are different off of this computer and back those up. And if I need to restore them, I can get the files that are similar from this computer back up. It's, it's really intelligent. So what happens is it looks like you have a lot of computers to back up here. But as far as server storage is concerned, um, only used about a little under 200 gigabytes of hard disk space on my one terabyte drive. So um, what that means is that you can store a heck of a lot more. I haven't even started to put the music on and movies or anything else. I definitely have a lot of space for that. Um, and they break up the shared folders as well as far as... Um, each user has their own personal folders and they have folders for music and photos and miscellaneous files recorded TV right now it's not really important but in the future that will be important um, software installation programs also have you can see I've got 56 megabytes of that those are like drivers and things like that um, so all in all this is you know it's something I think one of the most beneficial things are these two things music and photos it's a centralized spot for everyone to store the music and photo files the other thing is, is that when you get into settings you can get into the um, Windows remote access um, so why I've turned it on used it set it up then turn it off and I'll tell you why what this is, does is it allows you to get into your network or the server from the internet and it's a secure connection you need to get port 443 forwarded on your router if you don't know how to do that go to portforward.com and they have complete explanation of what port forwarding is about and also detailed explanations on how to do it on your specific router um, definitely worthwhile what happens is when you get to this remote access is that it, you know you can get in there and from the internet get onto your files, grab your photos, do whatever you want. Um, one thing that's important is that you can turn it on and off and when I'm at home I'm obviously not going to be remote accessing into my computer via the internet. I just hit it with my network. So the people who would be interested in doing that are people who would like to break onto your, into your network through the internet. So uh, when I'm at home I keep it turned off. When I'm gone for the day I'll turn it on. Um, stay tuned. Next, we're going to talk more about the technical aspects of the um, motherboard, the, the Intel D510 with the Intel D510 CPU, from, um, the Pineview Atom CPU. Excellent. I love this. Great little motherboard.